Hello everyone, this is Shahid Reis from CVI 2023 in Austin. I'm really privileged, privileged to be with Dr. Manus Berlakis. He's a co-director for the CVI. Manus, nice to see you. Thank you. Thanks again, Shadi. Thank Thanks for your help with the meeting and yeah. uh, super excited yeah. you're here. And thank you so much for putting this together, uh, another successful meeting in Austin. And the attendance, I think, uh, it reached a record this year. So uh, well, It's been great. You had uh, packed rooms, great discussions, and uh, lots of learning and great food, too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the, the vision for CVI coronary track for uh, this year. What was your plan? And then what's your plan for going forward? Yeah, thanks, Adi. So um, the plan for this year, as you know, from the other tracks, was to make it very practical, to the point, and very interactive. Mm -hmm. So we changed the room format, the speakers are now roaming on the floor. Um, we did try to have more time for discussion. It worked sometimes, not all the time, but um, it's loud and clear. People like the case format, people like to talk about specific cases. Complications is always a big hit, so we're going to probably expand the next year and have more complications going on. And uh, the people also were very excited about the, the case competition. You know, saw their cases, discussed their cases. So there were cases on the main rooms, cases in the case competition. So everything is very practical and Absolutely. to the point. And that's your um, uh, motto, right? Operators enclaved. That's right. So the goal is that it's not abstract, but it's practical and to the point. Absolutely. So one thing also highlight from CVI is the scholarship and the travel. We have noticed a lot of international presence during this meeting. Absolutely. And, you know, the, we are very excited about the young operators, those in training, those early after fellowship. Uh, we believe that there there's a lot of opportunity and that's the most stressful year. So I remember it was for me the most stressful year of my yeah. career. And I think if we can make it less stressful and make the life more successful and a little easier to navigate, that's a win for them, for the patients and for everyone else. Yeah. So innovation is a big theme here. So and uh, so, what is the highlight for innovation? And we saw the, the keynote speaker, Dr. Muller, give phenomenal talk about a spectrum of things, medicine and starting, ending up with nuclear war. But also innovation is a huge thing. And I noticed that something uh, new this year is about the imaging aspect of uh, structural heart disease. It's a big presence, which is new also to the field. Absolutely. You know, in, in, intervention in general, every every aspect, I mean, coronary structure, everything is changing year after year. Um, we do have actually big trials. Lumion is coming up, October is coming up, some major big data will be coming up in the next couple of months. And But we already have some strong data. The problem is that the application is where things don't go well. People want to use, I think many people want to use, uh, honestly want to use imaging and physiology, but then when it comes to the point of using them, they get the image and then it's hard to understand, okay, what's going on? Yes. And then sometimes it's so confusing that it gets a bit more stressful having the image than not. Yeah. So if we can be a little more, uh, provide more information, how do you analyze the image, what are the basics of the image analysis, the basics yeah. of coronary physiology, then when that happens to you, you're a little easier in um, making sense of what's the world around you. Absolutely. For Dr. Mueller, you know, we're very, uh, you know, thrilled, and it shows to us that you know there is all the concern for burnout, and we work too hard and everything else. But if you love what you do, like he does, you can do your clinical practice, and you can get into device development and new science, and still be energized at age, you know, pretty yeah. advanced age, yeah. and very functional and inspiring other people to do the same Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. So it's about burnout. It's about you know finding your passion in what you do. Yeah, I spend time in the things that you care for. No, it's one thing uh, most of your team presented about is uh, burnout. And the results are very striking. The survey that you shared with interventionists, I think 1,500 responded, and it's very striking. I mean, you're right. I mean, we were shocked to see some people are so frustrated, I think, and have a lot of negativity. And that's, exp that's anticipated. You know, we had COVID, everyone was stuck in the house, all these extra regulations. We had uh, a lot of stress in everyone's lives. And, the financial I mean, aspect, the pressure. To be honest, I mean, it's not an easy job, right? I mean, you're in and, uh, I mean, this can be very stressful procedures, very yeah. stressful patients to work with. And don't forget that we're humans, we have families, we have other obligations, less sleep, you're up at 3 a.m. and the next day you may not be in your best shape. So, yeah. I mean, I can see why this is happening and everyone gets frustrated, including myself several times. Uh, but I guess the goal is that you find something that keeps you going even when you're frustrated. So that some, nothing's going to be 100%. I mean, there's going to be medical chart, there's going to be epic, it's not going to go away. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, you either get used to it and make the most out of it, and, you know, the things that you don't like as much, you just say, you know what, there are other things that are so important, make up for all the sacrifices or the pain yes, you have absolutely. to get through. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, the two things, either you change the things, if it doesn't uh, embrace it, if not, then it's time to move somewhere else. Yeah, otherwise there's nothing, 80%. If you have 80% perfect, I think you are in good job, in good shape. 
nothing hunting. Well, I think the one thing we didn't do in the survey, we should have done, is talk about the external factors. You know, there's the job, there's the pressure, but there's internal factors. You know, the same person can be, or someone can be in the same job, two different people. One can be happy and productive, the other may be in despair. Mm -hmm. So although there are some external things we don't control, what we control is how we respond to that. And, you know, everyone, I mean, some, get, get me wrong, sometimes some things, you know, for, for most people would be too much, but quite often you can make the most out of what you've got and yes. still be happy with it. Absolutely. Let's close on a positive note. What's going to be new in 2024? It remains to be determined, but one thing is for sure, we'll still be still very highly case-based. Yes. There will be more complications. We plan to expand the international grants and uh, the case competitions, because I think the practical part is the most important. And, you know, that's not official yet, but we plan some extra things to foster research and innovation as well, which will be announced soon. So, thank you so much, Dr. Provakis. Again, for the audience, please uh, stay tuned for the announcement for the location as well as the date for 2024. And mark your calendar for submission for application. I think the deadline is in May for scholarship as well as abstract and case challenges. Thank you so much for your time. Thank Thanks you. And actually, it's July. It's July 2024. July, I think, 18, 21, 2024. Yeah. And it's going to be in Denver next year. But we'll get votes and maybe we'll come back to Austin. Okay, we'll see that. It depends on the, how you feel outside. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> thank you for thank watching. You. This is Shad Reis from Austin, uh, CVI 2023. Dr. Burlakis, thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.